First of all, how's my sound? Because I didn't do the sound. It's good. I think it's because you didn't do it. It's good. Oh, come on. Are you going to go with that stereotype? <laughs> so here's what happens. Yeah. I'm just saying as an OCD person. Uh-huh. I'm just saying. Who starts out with that except a hack? I'm just saying. An OCD person, uh, if you say 1030, then you say 1045. I'm going to have the same problem getting there at 1045 as I had at 1030. Like, I was there at 1030, ready to text you at 1031. Uh-huh. Then I saw your thing. I got, and your thing was, Yandy, but, uh, oh, my wife is really being mean to me. Oh, who's that? Is that Dice? No. Actually, I don't think that's Dice, no. <laughs> no, no, he just can't give me the blowjob. No. no, that's not your wife. I was doing Dice completely <laughs> into the thing. All right. So no, I think that was uh, that was Lou Costello getting a blowjob there. I don't think. Damn it. Oh, I'm it. That's as far as I can go in, in uh, impressions. Oh, I'm it. Ah, oh, yes. I'm, hey, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm about to. I'm, <laughs> a, I'm, a, I'm about to. I'm a, I'm a bad boy. <laughs> or you could just listen to Jeff Wayne, ladies and gentlemen, who would do Lou Costello. That's what I heard, that he would do Lou Costello when he was being menaced by people. Ah. This is an inside joke between Josh and I. Yeah. At this point. <laughs> Right? <laughs> I hope so. I would be sad. Now, I would Jeff be sad if, if I would be sad if people knew who Jeff Wayne was. But my basic point is that if you have OCD, and again, I'm not complaining. I'm I just am, I'm like Jesus, but without the positive side. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so with OCD, if you go and I that's like OCD. Okay, now it's 1045. That doesn't mean you're going to be even more ready for 1045. You're going to go back as if you had, as if you had heard nothing. Right. And just now you have a new time. 10, oh, 1045. And then all of a sudden you're in the same thing. I'm just saying it's not interesting. It's yeah. not exciting. But it's important for me to get out there. You can fuck people. around to fill any space is what you're saying. I can do what? You can fuck around to fill any space. No, no, no. You make it sound like fuck around. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the enemy here. You can panic to fill any space. I thought I was being nice. I, <laughs> OCD. Oh, you one of those people who fuck around? Come on, Josh. Our base. Our fan base is very OCD heavy. Hold on a second, Josh. Josh, hold on a second. Yeah. Okay. So, what did you do between those thirty minutes? Those that that those fifteen minutes. Okay. Here's what I did. I prepared a uh, bit. Uh huh. Do you want to see the bit? Sure. Can you remember? I'm I just want to make sure it wasn't fucking around. <laughs> I'm going to have to remember OCD. Uh, OCD medication. Will you remember that, or do you want me to say it now and then go back to this? Uh, I guess I can remember it. So, um, I'm not going to obsess about it, but. <laughs> so I started. Uh, so I I'm, here's the bit. Okay. Josh, yeah, I finally have found a way to eat during the podcast at no detriment to you. Uh huh. Uh, smooth. I get my. Uh, don't forget, I have type two diabetes. I have type two diabetes. I have it. Oh yeah. He's got it. Right. I have. I have a low half. I go, go, go. I get very tired every. Every fifteen hoo hoos. So, okay. So I I I uh, I say something. Yeah, I just think everybody's against me. <laughs> you sit back and chew. Uh, that's better than chewing into the mic. It is. Yes. It is. Interesting. You should say that. Nope. Your mouth still full. You blew it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to admit, though, the closest that I've gotten. What is that? A vat of olives? What is that? <laughs> no, it's uh, it, it's seedless grapes. Ah, and let okay. me tell you something. I was in the supermarket this week. Yeah. And I was at Whole Foods. The uh whole. And I sold the I sold the cotton category, the heck cotton categories. But uh yeah, this is not my first trip from the turnip truck to the produce aisle. I said, stay away from the cotton candy grapes. And uh okay, that's it. I can't do the voice that long, but I went with these uh these all kinds You've of You've uh, put it in there's like a Texas thing to the cotton candy grapes. I love the cotton get the cotton 
got the grapes. Yeah. That's pretty good, right? No, no, it's, nothing's it's, pretty good. It's, it's, it's a ways away from the original. Oh my god! Now I know what it's like. To me, voice over let me refresh your. Let me refresh your memory. That's what I'm here for. The cotton candy grapes. <laughs> That's charming. You know, I was going to say, I could see where the voice of workshop would be with you, but I think it would actually be pleasant. Well, there, was, be a, there was a lot of crack. There was a lot of crackle in that delivery. Let me hear it again. Let me hear it. Just Let me see give if I can give you a clearer read. That's what I'm here for. The cotton candy grapes. Okay. It's Liza plus. Yeah, it's Liza plus. It's Liza. It's yeah. mostly Liza. It's Liza plus for sure. <laughs> You'll be great. They'll be great. Because it They'll, wasn't what, actually Liza. It wasn't Liza, though. No, that's yeah. what makes it. If it's Liza, I'll just call up. I can't think of the person who does. Oh, uh, uh, that's how far I am disconnected from my the comedy go, goings on. Louise Duarte. No, no, no. This is um. <laughs> she's very funny, huh. and that was her main. Huh. Hilarious bit was she did the funniest lies. Okay, what is the huh. point? I don't is know. it going to help us? No. Uh, no, not helping me. So that was the bit. Uh huh. And then I, uh, then I just tell myself I have to drink co- a lot of coffee. So like I'll go like this, nervously. Uh, but you didn't and go. Then, you forgot to go. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Thank. Thank you. Okay. But here's the other thing, Josh. Uh-huh. Part of the disease is I cannot sit. I could not sit. To me, it seemed, would seem like pure hell if I just tried to sit still Yeah, from 10.30 to 10.45. Right. Like, I guess some people do. They're at their podcast desk. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, I, I would not be able. I can't sit still, period. So. Okay. So you could relate to me in that way. Right. But other ways you can. <laughs> I hate what if I, What if I would have characterized it as Misha Goss? Would you have, would you have pushed back just as hard as fucking around? No, because I think Michigas. No, no, no. I think the the point is that you don't ever, ever describe someone's illness like I have. I, I, in I way. Well, I think that's where our misunderstanding is. I, I wasn't really. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't I'm really. Sorry. I wasn't really referring to your illness when I said fucking around. I was referring more to just the killing time aspect of it. I'm trying to pretend that this is a Twitter exchange, and in a Twitter exchange, you just keep going further in your direction. Right. Wow. <laughs> I have an illness, Josh. I ha- I'm sick from the OCD. <laughs> and you call it fucking around. You're fucking around. Fuck you. Fuck you. Block mute. Block mute. Unblock mute. Mute. Block mute. Mute. <laughs> <laughs> do you know who Marcus King is? I don't. Or maybe very, I very... do, and I slip my mind. I just found out about him. He's like a blues, southern, Allman Brothersy. Sounding guy, he's really great. But he was just talking about that he liked working in Nashville because it was organized. It was organized, so he liked that. You know, right. so he just like like do it track, do it track, do voiceovers track, lunch, more voice. You know, right. I don't know why I said voiceover. <laughs> yeah, professionalism isn't always the enemy of creativity. <laughs> it, it was in the sixties, maybe because in the sixties, in that time period where there was like. If I had, I'm not saying. But there was that, also I, the Wrecking Crew, so. Right, right. Was the Wrecking Crew all like Stone Cold sober? I don't know if they were sober, I don't, but they were certainly professional. Oh yeah, yes, yes. Well, that's like you just saying. I always thought of like you're hiring them. You're hiring them, don't? Would you, were you also that they also played? In, I'm, I know not. Wow. I mean, wow. I mean, <laughs> 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 no, they played mostly with each other all the time, right? Well, there was a large pool of musicians who would, in, in, within various combinations, but most, yes, a lot of them were there all the time. So there were, like, so a couple of bassists all together, or three bassists? I, I don't know. The bass count. Oh, God. But why, Carol why, Kay. Why? Carol <laughs> Kay was your, was your main one. Why don't you try, uh, <laughs> <laughs> why don't you try, and, I'd be the worst if you There's an jumping. enjoyable documentary called The Wrecking Crew, you might have. I know, I know that there is, and the, I, the name Carol Kay comes up. Yes, she's the bass genius. <laughs> this is what's wrong with, I just realized, and I'm not making fun of people, I'm saying I have a mild dementia, but this is what's wrong <laughs> with uh, aging, dementia, and having old references in your head. Yeah. Here you, You're just like, what, is, what was Iron Butterfly? What, why am I saying that? <laughs> Can you tell me, Josh? Josh, I was talking to Fitz. Uh, 
What's an old Mitzi? Mitzi, oh, not Mitzi Shore. <laughs> I just forgot the reference. <laughs> hey, Josh, why am I saying 1910 Fruit Gum Company over and over? <laughs> because is uh, because and, and I keep telling Susan, Susan left you six years ago. <laughs> Huh? Just calm down. <laughs> take off, take like, off the wig. Well, I don't have a Phil Spector wig, do I? <laughs> I don't ever want if I I don't want to murder anybody, and if I do murder somebody, yeah. I don't want to be like with a crazy wig walking around. All right. Well, you can control that to some extent. Well, I happen to have a good head of hair. Yeah, that's all there is to it. Right. Which which so. protects you from crazy wigs in a lot of ways. It protects me in many ways because, short, am I short? Yes. Although certainly an eyewitness might say still he was wearing a crazy wig. <laughs> well, they said that about, you know, I don't really want to get back into this, but that was always like the weird part of the Marv Albert thing was he, I mean, I just couldn't get off that one detail that he, she said he pulled my hair or she said he, she pulled his hair and he goes, how could it be a, how could I have a toupee? And have it pulled up. You see? You know what I'm saying? You remember a little bit of it, don't you? I just remember the sweet taste of back flesh. <laughs> Is that what did you do that from? What's that from? I don't know. I just mean that that was one of the things about it. Was he <laughs> bit her back. Yeah. And the thing is, here's the thing. There before the grace of God. Yes. Lie. What? Back flesh. <laughs> Anyway, let me go back to the topic. The topic is OCD medication, and uh, I want to go. I think I might want to go up my medication, and I'm not sure if I should. So I need everyone to weigh in. I was about to say there's there's a specific person you should ask about this. <laughs> that, oh no, no, I will be that going. That doesn't to my listen to the podcast. Oh, don't get me wrong. I will be going to my psychiatrist. Oh, don't get me wrong. What are you trying to achieve with an upping in the medication? Well, Prozac is supposedly, supposedly, yeah. or already, I'm not helping. This they, I'm, they got me on this Prozac racket. Uh, Prozac is supposed to be especially good for OCD, right? You know, of all of those. But types can of I say, from personal experience with you, we've ridden the Prozac ladder up the charts before, and it did. We did, it, right? It did not end pretty. <laughs> <laughs> How far did I go up? It was high. <laughs> hey, if anybody's in the chat room right now. <laughs> I just made myself laugh. You went buffet, you went buffet style with it, if that's any <laughs> indication. Someone tell me, someone right now, when you're also thinking, well, tell me what your dosage is. Tell me, also, I want a lot of people weighing in who heard from a guy. Does, four, does 40 to 70, is that a reasonable thing? I'm on 60 right now. Okay. I think yeah, at one point you were at 40 at the bottom, right? Right, right. I definitely okay. was, uh, I needed 60. Right. And but you I went higher. Went, you went higher. I went up to 80. Okay. Yeah. I went up to 80, at least yeah. 80. And then so. everyone said sell. Yeah. So what I want is people who care about me weighing in or just people who said, I heard from, I was at the Subway uh, sandwich shop and I heard a guy talking about it, pros that he goes, I really pile it on. <laughs> <laughs> this is as an audience. This isn't our first chemical rodeo with you. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. You know, what's the difference between a narcissistic... I'm not saying I have narcissistic personality disorder. No. You could say it. No. But that's you the difference. Nar you have narcissistic flavored personality disorder. Exactly. Yes. Well, we'll, we'll get this guy. I'm working to a live studio audience here. I started to. Yeah. What's his trip? Uh, okay, now you have to say what I was going to say. What was I going to say? Uh, I'm not saying uh, I have personality, narcissistic personality disorder. But. Oh, right. But there was something I was making all about me with the, oh, yeah, that they would make it all about you. I, you tell me. Uh, let me bring everybody in. I have OCD. I, I need uh, attention out towards my OCD problems. Right. That's narcissism. A little bit. But you are not, you are a private person. I'm more so than you. You're yes. more, I'm not saying you're pro, like, you know, dangerously so, like, I did follow up with that guy who sent you that letter, and I did not realize. <laughs> I didn't know about you and the uh, the bad, the really uh, bad things. And the really <laughs> <laughs> First of all, 
I can't imagine you in fishnet stockings. A, I can't imagine you in fishnet stockings. And B, why the whip or implement or hilarious carrot toppy style device that you'd be holding? <laughs> I think we've covered everything. Have we? That's record. No, time. with the OCD. Oh, okay. With the OCD. But I so, forgot what so, we're... so yeah, in my, I think you're at a good place. I don't think you need to go up. Okay, I think you're. I think you. I think you're right. Let it roll. Bing. Yes. My therapist has been saying, "Look, you keep bringing it up." So I'm just saying, maybe you want to even try 10 milligrams. But she, her contact is saying to her, "I can get it for you cheaper." The idea there is that my therapist is somehow selling me illegal Prozac. Right. That's bullshit. Every joke about my therapist is like me talking about Fang. It's right? A, a little bit. When you when you first said my therapist, it was very my wife kind of feeling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I go, uh, hey, I'm Jewish. I go to a therapist. Uh, she's like, say, no, that means you want to sleep with a wolf. <laughs> I told you after my last gig that I felt very, like, very self-conscious to talking to this woman after the show. I was like, yeah, I was a little worried when you started talking about my wife. But <laughs> <laughs> Is that what she said to you? She said that, yeah. Not like, yeah, like it was like it was going to be hacky and, uh, paternal oh, yeah. and paternalistic. <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> if you're not calling your wife Fang already, or, well, actually, Fang was uh, Phyllis Diller's husband. Right. So that which always worked because a woman. Well, first of all, don't get me started with how great great it was for women. Have you seen this uh, waiting for Mrs. Maz- uh, Mazanovich, the marvelous Mrs. Ma- 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 Mazel? Uh-huh. You've seen the Maz- marvelous Mrs. Mazel, right? Yes. And and her this hu- woman and her house, as she calls it, the mausoleum. <laughs> this woman is a hit. In the 1950s or whatever. Yeah. So don't tell me that women... <laughs> She's tearing up the joint. I like this argument. So don't tell me women aren't doing well. Right. Oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. You're exhausted. 65 degrees downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> I'm here with Josh Elvis Weinstein. Now, Josh, how long... Whose idea was it to do the uh, Thoughts of Power podcast? Was, that, uh, was it Andy's idea or was it something you came up with? Uh, it was my sad, misguided idea, Andy. Thanks for asking. 66 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> now, task. It's going to be hot in the going, valley today. And I, it's a no repeat Monday. It's a, it's a back. It's a two. You said TV. that already. Ah, get it? No repeat. I was repeating it. Are you doing that joke or are you referring to my dementia? I, I don't even know anymore. Oh, hold on a second. I'm tr- I have to get out of my DJ character. Hold on. All right. Let okay. me turn. Let me turn down my gaslight. <laughs> that would have been a good song. Uh, turn on your gaslight. <laughs> let it light on me. Light on me. Light on. Oh. Convince me I'm crazy. <laughs> light on me. The lights are going down. Light on me. Why is the, I can't think of one example from that movie. You know why? I'm, I'm gaslighting myself. Oh, get your head out of the oven. <laughs> what was that? You were gaslighting yourself. You were oh. gassing yourself. <laughs> I, because I have narcissistic personality disorder, light, light. Ah. They, said, <laughs> they said series one. I thought you were referring to my joke, which was about, which was to the point of maybe, what's her, that's not, what's that woman's name? The bell jar. 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 <laughs> What's a... <laughs> Maybe Sylvia Plath was just a a terrible baker. Did you ever think of that? See? I don't even have any desire. You know, maybe comedy wasn't the right field for me. <laughs> well, if you're just getting up to the 60s. <laughs> I When I'm maintaining to you is that my fantasy life, I don't think I said this the right way before, my fantasy life, where I still think I am, Yeah, I still think I'm mentally, it's 1969. Okay. The so, Jets have just won the Super Bowl. Okay. This is your bar mitzvah year, I think. It's my bar mitzvah year. <laughs> yeah. 
The Jets just won the Super Bowl. Okay. The Mets won the World Series on my birthday. Uh huh. And I look as hip as the Queen's grandson who is standing vigil. You see that kid? Handsome kid with yeah. the mop top. Uh huh. Okay. That's right. I'm going there, Josh. Doing my Queen material. Hey, uh, hey, let me get this straight. The Queen's dead for uh, how long is she dying for? It's been 10 days. Ah! Hop in the, hop in the, hop in the box, Elizabeth. Look, this is what I'm going to do. Edgy material this late after yeah. it. It's your choice whether to put it in. Everybody's talking about Queen Elizabeth dying, but they don't talk about what's up with Prince Andrew with his Jeffrey Epstein or Steen. Which one did he say? He's, he's, the one, Steen? he's the one in a can, right? What do you mean in the can? Prince Andrew in a can. <laughs> I thought you were doing like a, uh, like, hey, see? Yeah, that's right. Jeffrey Epstein, he killed himself in the can, see? That's what I thought you were doing. Yeah, yeah he was in the can. It was and he all, wasn't it, in the can. The same vintage reference, almost. <laughs> see? See? I told you that was John Manfrolati's joke. I love this joke so much. Edward G. Robinson in the health food, in the health food store. I'd like some vitamins, see? Say, I, so I think of the permutations of that. That's the right word all day long. Going to the tax office. I'm here for my schedule. Say, say. <laughs> <laughs> it's good when you add on to other people's jokes. It's really a good use of time. You know, because here's the thing. <laughs> I want to tell you it, but I have to back it up with that his joke. Right. And then I have to make a whole thing about the tags on it. So it really does seem like a process of diminishing returns. What are you applying for? Clemency? <laughs> <laughs> what did you... Hey, I came here by land or say... I'm really getting concerned now about my... It sounds... My cough, if you had to do it on a meter, it sounds like I'm a Paul Mall smoker. It does. It, de it definitely does. And it sounds like you're getting less air out with each one now. You know what? Now it's just kind of, now it's kind of I, squeaky. <laughs> used to be the, I just want to tell you, it used to be my comedy that was dying. Uh, now I'm dying for real. Well, and this is what it's like. Finally. So strap, oh, strap finally, on. Finally, you found your voice. Is this a good promotion thing? It's 65 degrees. No, Andy Kindler looks like he's heading down the last couple of years, if you've heard of it all. So. To the thoughts viral, it, it could happen any day. This guy could have a stroke or... All right. Next time I'm this sorry. guy gets the light, he may head towards it. <laughs> have you ever seen Joe Coy? Uh, only briefly. I've never been in the same room. Seen. No, no, I don't mean that. I mean on a, a TV program. I know who he is. I had never seen his act before. I was, I'd been making fun of him for years because I'd heard... As soon as I heard that he likes to get a standing ovation, yeah, or he gets standing ovations and kind of feed, can feed into it sometimes or whatever yeah. it is, I was out right then. Uh -huh. I think he was on Seth Meyers, and uh, he came on and just did a series of things that was like uh, how big the places he was playing were, the 30,000 30, seater. The ten, oh, yeah, and those ten, the ten, that's what it started to sound to me like. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. It was all about how big he was, and then it was Seth Meyers, who I norm normally enjoy uh -huh. his interviews, but in this case, he was laughing more, more than he should have been. Uh -huh. But then I think, is that what you have to do if you're interviewing him? You have to laugh like that, or you would cry? Uh -huh. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> That is the danger of being the host of a show, is you can find yourself in that situation. That's why you know I shouldn't have ever... I don't think I ever really did strongly want to be a talk show host, ever. No, you but, were one, though. Right. But that was my own little uh, take on it. And they, uh, you know, did, side of... Did you pitch that show, or did they cast They came you? to me. Oh, yeah, okay. They came to me in that show, of Animal Planet. I don't like to talk about my highs because they were many years ago and they weren't that high. <laughs> you know, I'm enjoying myself today. I'm glad. I don't, I'm not being myself. Don't pick it apart. Don't pick it apart. Thank you. Thank you. But 
any minute I could go right back into how's it going now? Nope. <clears throat> how how did she what was the first thing the cotton candy lady said to you? Hello, sir? No, no. May I see what no, you're choosing? Whole, that was the whole interaction. I think I said how something. Did you I said catch something. Your eye? Like, I, huh? How did you catch how did it start? I was standing there holding a bag of cotton candy grapes. <laughs> And they were in one of those sort of, they were on one of those cent- those island displays. It was, you know, it wasn't in the big, the, the wall of produce. It was on an island display. And a woman approached me from the other, other side of the island. And, uh, you know, I'm picturing probably much more flamboyant clothing now in my head than what she actually had on. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> She looked at me and went, that's what I'm here for, <laughs> the cotton candy grapes. Like we were in on something together. And they had you. Like the, bat, like the great bat signal went up and we were both answering it. This was before the pandemic. So you were, yes. you were up close. With that's this. how old this bit is. Yes. It's not an old bit. <laughs> Things that happen to you in real life are not bits. Okay. Thank that's you. the difference between right. us and uh, Mac and Animals. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> We'll be back with the grunting animals, 16 before the hour. Fuck, fuck, women, misogyny. Fuck it. You no, see, I don't even have the stomach. I don't even have a point of view. I could never have been a morning DJ. Nobody wants I think we've established that. that. <laughs> What's that? We've established that. we've that. established that, right? Yes. I mean, you, I... we pretty much lost you at morning, really. That's true. <laughs> you had me at this. You lost me at that. And definitely morning. Uh, I wanted to say that I looked for Ed Sullivan. I can only find one episode. Yeah. Coming up. Yeah. Unless well, I. It, no, they're there every. There's two a day. But they don't. You know, those things don't get listed very well. So you just have to go to the source. I have Spectrum. I don't think you heard me. They have. I understand. We can. Can we stop talking about your medical conditions, please? Boom, 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 Here's somebody who can't stop. Here's when you know that your your co-host is going off the diva and he can't stop trying to create his own stings. Hey, Josh, check this out. It's time for comedy. Huh? I make sure it's clean. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I appreciate it. You don't appreciate it. I and do you want me to stop. It. No, okay, I don't. Okay, I'm going to do no. one more. You ready? Okay, good. <clears throat> do you like this part? you like the clearing of the throat? Yeah. Or is it too hacky? No, no. <clears throat> it's, 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 both hacky. Have, it's both hacky and perfect. I have a chair that could spin around. I don't think I should try it. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. I'm needy again. I'm needy again. He's needy. Boom. <laughs> How sad. <laughs> okay. Um, obviously, I don't have the, a, the ADHD prevents me from coming up with multiple ideas. That's why I never could pitch anything good. All right. Well, that's why you're such a cameo star. <laughs> hey, you know, you know what? My last uh, appeal, you know how many guys I got from that last appeal over the weekend, prime time, going right down the barrel, uh, hearts, I, I paid for hearts. To explode and everything. I'm two, lying. Two. Two. That's right. <laughs> uh, so that was it. That's all I had uh, was the Joe Coy thing. I, I think there were other things, too. But it can't be Order Lands of Prazol. That can't be relating to this podcast. No. <laughs> uh, mail this thing to a thing? No. 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 Honey, I'm putting the big check in the bank. <laughs> Oh yeah, that that the time period was terrible a few months ago where I was I was having trouble putting these checks in the bank and then they I kept getting these people answering, Oh, this is Richard. What you're doing is uh, the, that ATM does not accept checks and, and I'm replying, Are you kidding me, Freddie? <laughs> are, are you, are really? You... <laughs> really, Sid? Are you f- you know, really to this point? Do you think I'm a moron, Mr. Edward, uh, Mr. Uh, I don't know how, how I, they may be just a first name. Someone just 
went by in some with some trick jalopy horn or something. I don't know what just happened here. You know what's interesting is I must be because I pay you know for a deluxe house apartment uh, kind of. I don't hear any of that sound because of the extraordinary. Well, oh, I forgot. I'm in, I'm in my cameo studio. Right. I had the wall specially done. I see all the uh, egg egg crate, eggshell crate there stuff. Whatever the I fuck hear that's that. called. I don't care. Oh, now you're going <laughs> to... So sometimes, and it's not just because I'm Jewish, and it's not just because it does seem like the world is ending, that sounds like a bomb coming in. Yeah, it is a bomb coming What's in. What's the difference between that and the bomb? Uh, the explosion at the end. It hasn't ended yet. Wait for it, as Ray and I would You know what? Say. Let me tell you something. I, you, I did not want to be on a plane with you. See, I would be on a plane with you knowing you're... you're, you're you have some uh, issues flying. I go, Josh, can I get you anything like a bromo seltzer? But you, on the other hand, are encouraging me. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to explode and you're dead. After you know. I don't have it. I, I want to go history. back to, I want to go back to the me having issues on the plane. I don't have, I don't have it. Yeah. Oh, I thought you did. No, I just don't prefer it to driving like you. I don't prefer it to. No, no. I thought you thought you said you were a little bit uncomfortable on planes. Am I wrong? No, I'm physically uncomfortable on planes, but I'm no, not. not because you're a giant. <laughs> no. no, it doesn't cause me anxiety, no. no I, oh, I, I See, I added that part of the story in there. Allison doesn't get nervous on planes because she knows she's not responsible. Right. But then you didn't say, I, on the other hand, am a nervous Nelly. I have to take a lot of lens of Razal. Before right. the flight no, and no. boning. No, no, you know, no. my mother was big on boning. Was she? Yeah. Not the other kind. Drama, man. No. And if I said another thing, you go, ah, 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 the boning, boning. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, and that concludes. You know what? Since my mother's passed, I haven't felt like doing extended riffs on her. On her. I mean, like, it doesn't feel. It's good to, well, it was it's just more fun when she's still alive and you can refer to her. Right, the element of danger kind of kept it fun. She was a great comedy, that lady was a great comedy foil. I don't want anybody to get the idea that I don't love my mother. Isn't that interesting? I don't think we do. I think we feel like you hated her, but love her. Yeah. I hated her as a kid and was ter- terrified of her. But later I found that it was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> you know, later on, when Later, in therapy, I found, and this is, again, my fake therapist. My said, therapist oh, says. My therapist says, well, well, maybe you were, well, they told you, don't aggravate me, didn't they? And what did you do? Well, I guess I aggravated them. <laughs> well, whose fault is that, fuck face? Right. And again, I don't get the fuck face in a professional se- setting like a therapy. Fool you twice, shame on you, okay? <laughs> I think, oh, can you name one saying along those lines that could have anything but a uh, any kind of effect on us currently. It's not going to be Stitch in Time. No. <laughs> For, I don't know. I think there's, there's some validity to fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. That's true. But this one you should never hear again. If you want to believe what a person's really like, just hear what they'll say. You know, that thing that the, could have been Maya Angelou or could have been Oprah. I have to say, you're really undermining its credibility with that voice, too. Well, <laughs> this is my Maya Angelou voice. Uh, and I, why did the cage burst thing? <laughs> Come on, Andy. Come on. This is the disadvantage of not having the threat of being shut down. <laughs> you know, not having the FCC. Right, there's no cancellation. There's no There's nothing fining. hanging in the yeah, balance. Exactly. Oh, you know what? This is exactly where you should do your semi-sarcastic send-up of old stereotypes that makes us question why are you still thinking about them so much. <laughs> but then I'll, you know how I always get the people back to Josh, right? 67 degrees now. Hey, th- and then you know what? You know how I'm going to be like in November? How are you going to be? 50 degrees. We could get down to ah. <laughs> <laughs> Changes with the times, this man. I think you were just very pleased right there. I could tell you were really pleased that I had a line, a through line. Yeah, there was no. See? I was braced for what was I talking about? <laughs> what was I talking about? That, do you have that as a tag? What was I? 
What did I just say? Here's what it should be. What did I just say? Wah, wah. The worst idea is me trying to imitate your thing you're already doing. I got a You know, one of these things. I want a bottle, 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 bottle. Wah, wah. And his new single, What Did I Just Say? What Was I Talking About? With the B side, Why Did I Just Come In Here? Why? Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm. I am sad that I haven't gone as a human past the stereotype of John McCain. That's what I've become. Yeah. What did I come in here for? Yeah. But at least you can shrug fully. Well, I think I'm funnier than John McCain. I think you are, too. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you know what? Thank you. Thank you a lot. Because he uh. knew he was doing the same joke over and over. Uh, right. Are you going to, did you ever have a Vespa? <laughs> Were you just buying time for a coffee sip? No, that no, no I, I, it was a double thing. It was a double thing. Because it looked like something that maybe I in another life would have been okay with if I was in an armored suit. I still kind of want a Vespa, I have to say. Not necessarily a Vespa per se, but. that it, Why does it look safer? Uh, I don't know why it does. It just looks un, unmenacing. Well, this is great, Josh. All I've done now is shovel down. It's not as bad as having Banaka. <laughs> Weed Banaka. Weed Banaka. And why is it? Because I'm going to meet. To give me hey, a look, line. a new person. I hope I'm high enough to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. That's what we call nutshelling it. Oh God! I want to. I want to sneeze or something. Maybe because of allergies. Are they spelled allergies? This is the other part of me where I go. I actually think I, I'm getting rid of this part of me. All I right. actually think it's a clever side of me. All right. It's the whole norm normally. Right. Well, it, it be, proves you don't have to procreate to have dad humor. You don't have to what? You don't have to procreate to have dad humor. <laughs> no. In fact, the way I. Uh, why Why am I? Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. I am not John Fetterman, but I'm one of the people in one of the races that somehow, come on, no, uh, pony up 10 more dollars. I don't like that ding alert. It makes it feel like you're having an idea. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it off right now. Okay. Because I think it's rude. I just meant in general. I don't mean fuck, No, I don't like I don't it. Mean, well, what fuck do you, you and your ding alert. Well, what do you use? I use something else. I actually well, you, use vibrate mostly. All right, that's uh, it was a little. Hey, you know what, Josh? That's a little too much information. <laughs> I can't even look what I'm we'll doing. We'll be back here on WTMI. Too much information. Oh, I keep hearing this. I listen to this that's podcast. A good, that's but, a good. That's a good call letters for a news station. What is that? WTMI. W. <laughs> uh, it was twenty minutes after the hour. You know. Uh, uh, Somebody obnoxious was doing something obnoxious. A little WTMI. That's all I was going to do. Somebody obnoxious was, and I put the references in, and we would have been no further ahead. WTMI Too Much News Time is 11.33. So I listened to this podcast. I forget which one it is. But then what's his name comes on? Rick Springfield? No. It's uh, Vern. No. He's the number one DJ in the world. Ryan like, Seacrest? No, Yes, so it's like, hey, everybody's Brian Seacrest. And I want to tell you that every morning that uh, uh, we're, me, Jocko, Schmack, and Schmingsburg, we tell you all the things that we should tell you and some things that we probably shouldn't. We, we share with you all the parts of our personal lives that you should know about and some things that maybe we shouldn't have said. Every morning, Brian Seacrest. I, I can't even understand what it is. He goes, and of course... All that. We tell you all our favorite views on race, and some we probably shouldn't. (laughs) And then he says, and then, of course, all the great music. Who is listening to this? Who is listening to this? To this? This guy has no, has proven his hook is that he has no personality, no perceivable personality. I just feel like you need need a fresher approach than who's listening to this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I don't have one. All right. Well, nevertheless, come back. Then. Come back next week. <laughs> oh, I'll come back. 
Oh, I'll come back with the other. Oh, you you you, you don't think I can have other unformed ideas? <laughs> yeah, who's listening by to this? Friday? Just isn't isn't coming out in the wash. Look, Josh, <laughs> not every moment of the podcast. Six, I went to a workshop this last week. And it's all about, and it's not always about how to make your body out of that, and how to make your voice sound. Not just that it's clear, like my voice would normally be, right. but <laughs> I'm trying to do it for a thing where you can't understand me, and I'm claiming that I went to a thing that made me speak clearly there. Okay. And it's such a Now that we premise. know your intent, maybe try again. Okay. I don't know, Josh Alba. I went to a work. I, I went to a, po- hey, Josh, I went to a podcast workshop as well, last weekend, you know, about how you, pro- and it was all about how you project your voice. It was like, like I'm so tired of it. That's the reason why I'm not on who's who's in. See, it. but here's the thing: the one, the one thing that the one cardinal sin that DJs never do is make themselves unintelligible. They really. I don't. know that's why the bit's You're, bad. It's a, yeah, it's a false premise. No, I, no, no, it's not a false bit. It's like professional I, I, broadcasters I, are always intelligible. No, no, the bit would be that they tell you you have to have. Maybe they they told you you gotta put, you gotta make your voice interesting. And so I did some voice that made. <sighs> Okay, that's the joke. That's the identity. It's just a house number, Josh, uh-huh. as we say in the business. Uh-huh. Just a house number. Right. I'm very impressed with how I've learned, first of all, how long did it take me to get the uh, boom? Months, years, years, truly. True, yeah, truly. Years. Uh, and, uh, and all I have is this one windscreen. And I think you remember that commercial. Which I gave you, wind- I think. What? Which I gave you. You gave me. The windscreen, yeah. Yeah, one windscreen. Your windscreen stays on my mind. Uh-huh. Anyway. Sure. See, that's an old reference, but I don't know what the reference was to. To wind song. Okay, so at least I'm still, this is me, right before I'm go- I go to the home. But Josh. I, I got it close. I got it. <laughs> That's fine, Andy. Just, now, how much are these uh, teddy bear underwear? Not underwear. How many of these teddy bears? Yes, Andy. Me? Tonight we'll let it be alone, bro. Yes, Andy. <laughs> hey, Josh. Hey, I'm watching the Mets. You know, I used to watch uh, Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kiner and Bob Murphy. <laughs> Did you know I used those are real people? And they used to sell Rheingold Extra Dry. You know, you ever hear that one, Josh? Josh? Okay, Andy. Go to sleep, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Nurse, can we have more of the uh, more of the uh, sleepy pe- sleepy pie <laughs> <laughs> dose? I do look forward to that. I hope I'm, I end up somewhere where they're heavy on the sleeping medicine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want people. Look, I'm sixty five. Sixty five. I'm going to be sixty six soon. Sixty five. Sixty six. I do not want people to get concerned that they need to worry. If their lives are going to be, you know, I'm doing fine right now. I only worry about. I think they're only what, concerned that you're not going to die when their bet is down. When their what? When their bet is down. Uh, I don't like that idea. You know, can you people go get your fantasy, whatever on your, get your fantasy football on and stay out of the over and under on when I'm going to die. And the fact that Josh has it sponsored. Sixty-five let's degrees. Just say, let's, just say, let's just say that under already lost. <laughs> That's terrible. Nobody <laughs> predicted that I would die. I guess that no. I guess it would, it, would you get better odds if you pick a lower number? Oh, Josh, that feels so good. Did you know though? Right now, that I actually could have in the two years ago, or three years ago, or was it four years ago? I could easily be in a panic attack. I haven't had them in a long time, so. Whatever you're doing is helping. That, that was, uh, in my lexicon, in my worldview, you just jinxed the shit out of yourself. What are you talking about? I don't... Why? <laughs> I'll, I'll do it even more. Oh, I'm panicked. I make fun of myself when I am panicked. I can't breathe. Oh, I'm, for some reason, I want to throw up Panic. at lunch. I licked it. Oh, oh. No, I really did hit... Some, I really did start a fire in uh, Yosemite... In 1978, I'm not kidding you. Can someone provide me with the microfilm? I ran over someone and their Bic lighter exploded. (laughs) There were definitely times in my life where I heard this. Ka-chunk, chunk, chunk. What was that? Was that a thing? Yeah. 
Oh, God. I'm lucky to be alive, but I am alive. You are, indeed. I am alive. Yes. Uh, and I think that what I've learned is I've not I've seen that... your hologram before, and this ain't it. Exactly. And I think that the lesson I've learned is you won't see me driving to the George Washington Bridge to go to a gig at Rascals in West Orange, New Jersey. That can't happen anymore. No. I can't die looking for change on the floor, which I almost did once when I was high in the car. I was 18. So they were approaching the uh, toll booth, and I was high. Yeah. I was looking at the floor. Oh, where's the money? Where's the money? I was looking. People are stopping, oh. waving. Ah! <laughs> Open swaving. Okay, so <laughs> I I will avoid. Now, my question to you is, is it because I'm not driving that I feel better? But maybe I should still have more with the Prozac. Higher I dosages. I don't think so. I don't think Look, so. Look, I'm going to go with you. I've read this book before. We've been down this parade. I really want someone to take over the Dennis Miller style mantle. Hey, Kaka. Hey, Choo Choo. Somebody like that. Well, it could be you. And then, you know, mm. another two years, someone will have to take over again. <laughs> Wait, is that like a Dennis Miller slam? No, it was uh, predicting your death. <laughs> Josh, we were off that topic. Oh, sorry. We were off that topic. <laughs> I was thinking that character in, in uh, Lost in America. She keeps betting 22, 22. Your wife likes that number. <laughs> oh, God. Why can't everything in life just be those three movies? Modern Romance, Lost in America, and Defending Your Life. And that's all you do is you watch those. I know you get tired of it, but pretend that it's pretend that it's, you know what it is? It's just about the reason I'm telling others. And you know what my desert eye on this would be, Josh? Uh -huh. My desert eye on this? Well, I would bring up my desert, my desert eye on You know what the problem is? I think you're excluding the presciousness of uh, real life as well, as well. The what? The presciousness. Oh, well, somebody swallowed the New Yorker online. <laughs> That's not a bad slam, right? No, it's, nah. right. it's okay. <laughs> hey, what'd you do? What'd you, I, 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 see, there's the problem. I already said swallow the New Yorker online, but then I got to set it up again. Another yeah. one. I have nothing. No, no. Why? Tr that was as good as it's going to get, maybe. Why try to top it? That's right, Andy Two Times. Andy Two Times? Is Andy Two Times, is that from Goodfellas? Ah, uh, yes, I think so. Okay. I think so. You know what I need, Josh? I need a new mob movie or something. Yeah. Did you watch Abbott Elementary? I want a new mob. Boom, uh, boom, boom. One that makes me smooth. One that, here's what I would say when I was a kid. I want a new mob. Boom, boom, boom. One who's willing to make a sandwich. Boom, boom, boom. One who's, so I don't have to eat the horrible food in second grade. Uh-huh. I want I forgot the song. I'm just into the memory. Sure. I want a new mom. One that can make a sandwich. Now, people are people going to say, Andy, you're being misogynistic? No, I'm not being misogynistic. My father, God bless him, he had to go work as a plumber, and then there was a contractor at six in the morning. Came back at, at four or five in the afternoon. My mom was the only person who could make a sandwich. <laughs> Unless it was going to be me. I did not know how to make a sandwich in first grade. And that's Huey Jewish in the news. <laughs> you know, why is it that my old, the, the old slights are not uh, crowd pleasers? You people don't know how much It's, it's a whole new generation. These kids bring their, whole, they bring their own slights to the table. <laughs> Well, you know what the problem is, Josh. All the kids today, they get a, they get a, a trophy just for waking up in the morning. Remember when that was edgy comedy? Yes. That used to be what Bill Maher was guilty of. Maybe those kind of jokes. Used to be. Every, well, when he was just really terrible, not uh, oh, yeah, when he was still or, benignly terrible. <laughs> benignly terrible, not uh, malignantly evil. Ah. <laughs> it would be those kind of jokes. I can't forget. In other words, like his humor, I think we've talked about this already. His humor was couched as, you know, there was a brief time period. You make, can make this argument that your language could get you in trouble. I mean, that's what George Carlin was talking about. That's what Lenny Bruce was talking about. But 
that back then has now dev- devolved even more into, uh, you know, like what Dice was saying, um, they're just jokes, these horrible things I'm saying about right. uh, gay, gay people or whatever. Well, here's, oh, the, here's the real difference, I think. Not to get Tell serious me. on your yeah. Bill Maher bashing. Yeah. But when Politically Incorrect was first, you know, reviled by people, political correctness, and it was sort of reviled by people across the spectrum, that was because it was pervaded by academic white people. Right. But I think in the subsequent years, we found that those academic white people were, in fact, representing people's voices who were being offended by these things. But now we have the ability to hear it from the actual uh, othered voices. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And it's a whole different matter. And now it's 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 a it's a it's a tragedy. The biggest tragedy is that there are people online who are telling you you suck. You know what I mean? Right. A lot of these people they equate that too- with being canceled. Yes, canceled. Right. You want to know what cancel is, Josh? It's anti. From quickly, that's kind of love. The good's so good, the bad's so bad. That's kind of love. Makes you question your existence. That's kind of love we have. Everybody sing now. That's kind of love. Only comes around once in a lifetime. That's kind of love. Only comes around once. You should be glad. Cause that's kind of love. It keeps those strings in business. That's the kind of love we have. Ah, love. If you aren't defensive, you must attack. Ah, love. Come on, say something you can never take back. Ah, love. Drunken phone calls at 4 a.m. Just to start up all of again. Oi. That's the kind of love. Makes your friends call you stupid. That's the kind of love. Makes them think you're so sad. That's the kind of love. Kind of like chronic illness. That's the kind of love we have. Our love. Screaming in restaurants, making the scene. Our love. 38 messages on my machine. Our love. Neighbors pounding on the wall and nothing. Changes in love. Our love. Throwing dishes and tearing clothes. Our love. Rubbing faults in each other's noses. Our love. I'm powerless over its allure. Distance is the only cure for our kind of love. That's the kind of love. It's a kind of love. It's an unkind of love. Thank you very much. Hi there, bedhead. There's a difference between a bedhead and a, a non-cut head. Yeah. So well, there's no I know the difference, and I'm right. Oh, yeah. There's no question. I'm, <laughs> was I disagreeing with you? Look at yes. That. Look at that. There's no, they, don't blame this on my bed. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Funny stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry to start out so fucking funny. Yeah. I really think I, I got to ease into it. It just makes it a downhill slide the rest of the hour. No, 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 no. That's what you're used to. What yeah. I'm saying is we start here. Here we start. Yeah. I don't know why we start there. That's I a stupid know. thing to say. Why'd you say that? And don't call me stupid, fuckface. Bum, 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 bum. We're, we're in for a good old time, I feel like. <laughs> hi. Hi. Das fuckface. Hi. Das fuckface was, was, was written on the, um, on the um, uh, lamppost. Is that a new piece of self-art behind you? Oh, I, I'm... I'm where, oh, yeah, no, over, no, your, over your over your left Katz. over your left shoulder. Oh, that's your Doctor Cat cell. Okay, isn't that the cutest thing ever? It is. Is that for uh, is that for your uh, cameos? 
No, well, you know, you'd like to say it was for the cameos, but I'm actually doing a, a an interview. You know, the Young Turks that show, which I haven't even listened to in years. Yeah, I do. And it's uh uh that guy. Uh, what is his name? I don't know. Chang, ja- Jang, Chang. Oh, what is his name? Cenk Uger. Hirsch. Yeah, so he's interviewing me. So I've been I know I got it my- slightly wrong, but I can't. Uh, Shank. Cenk. It's not Shank. It's Cenk Uger or something like that. Yeah, something like that. And so he's interviewing me. I'm sure that's going to be great tonight when I thump for his name. He's interviewing me about Jimmy Dore tonight. So oh, good. It's going to be good. Weren't, so they now- once, weren't they once allies? Or were they yeah, always well, Jimmy Dore was from the, he, he was on the Young Turks for years. Right. Yeah. And then um, Jimmy's done so many terrible things, but one of the terrible things was uh, that co-host Anna Kasparian. I don't really know her that well, but he was like just, he was supposed to be, had made all these sexual comments. He's just a weird guy, but that's that you like, I want to get to, I want to keep it. my head. Save it for Jenks. Save it. I also want to keep my head, uh, I want to, what do they say when you, you don't want to go in the gutter with the other people? Uh, keep my you don't say that so it doesn't matter no keep my (laughs) um yes so i'm getting all set up and uh because i can't do the usual bullshit i do with you where i have i understand um, where i have my droopies sticking out of my pants it's a sad sad commentary how many times without knowing has I have I tilted down too much? And you've seen I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> a little, Seriously, tell the people it's, you're showing your hand and more. Yeah, in fact, the fact that you can't see my hand is what gets the um, the, uh, the the nervousness going. What's he doing down there? Oh God, stop it, stop it! But okay, welcome to Huckles, Huckles, not Chuckles. <laughs> welcome to Huckles. Oh, my darling, oh, my oh, darling, my oh, my darling, Clementine. Yo, 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 Yandy, yo, Yandy, I'm your penis. Yo, yo. That was, I was going for a whole different dog. Okay, go. Let me get I was, doing, I was doing Huckleberry Hound as opposed to Droopy oh. in that case. Huckleberry, Huckleberry Hound. I wanted to tell you before we get into the letters and the, all the other stuff that we have a, a big day. Imagine if we had one of those podcasts. Whoa, we had a big day today. Yeah. A lot of, a lot to get to. That's right. A we full docket. That. Don't even say that. Don't even respond to that one. I've got so many things going on. President Obama just issued a, I cannot seem to get away from the political. Uh, you don't give your main email to anybody who asks. Oh, my God. To raise is my, money. Is, is my, uh, my email is so full. Daily of, of politicians. Fetterman? Well, of everybody. Yeah. I just have so, the entire slate of, li- of liberal <laughs> candidates has my email. I've tried to unsubscribe. I'm going to be supporting them. Too, you can't uh, unsubscribe at this point. No, you can't. And that, that really is, that's a strike against a candidate. <laughs> against any candidate? Yes. If you, can't, yeah. if you can't unsubscribe, how can you trust them? And I got to tell you, I love, as you know, I love Joe Biden. I mean, I wouldn't have voted for him. You know, I love right. Joe Biden. I'm a little sick of his dad at this point. Yeah, his dad. But this is the other one. Um, here, I'll do it. You've heard me do this. This is exactly it. Uh, we, can do, we can do something about the climate. No, I'm not I'm kidding serious. here. Yes. That's not hyperbole. I'm serious here. I'm serious. I'm not joking, folks. That's not a joke. You're not funny, Joe Biden. I oh, love you, man. but you're not funny. So we never assume that you're going to It's just the mark of a man who spent 50 years not being taken seriously, I think. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. <laughs> He's, uh, I, I have a good I'm, I'm, I have a good point to make about this, folks. No, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just saying that. It is the Malachi. weirdest low self-esteem tick. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Even as they're starting to laugh. It's not, don't laugh. <laughs> right. I'm saying something that's making an incisive, uh, you know, Look into American life and giving it to the other guy with a little humor, but don't laugh at that. That's not funny. We're dealing with a fascist crisis at hand. I'm not joking here. Now, Hitler, yeah, Hitler was a dictator. No, 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 folks. Listen to this. No, no, folks. Listen, he was. Speaking of Hitler as a dictator, did you watch the Ken Burns this week? Okay, here's what happened. I watched the first one. <laughs> Why does it have to be a story? And then Susan and I were like, we know we're going to watch the other two. We're so tired. <laughs> so tired. <laughs> here's what here's what I decided what is 
wrong with Ken Burns. Yeah. He does not, and I'm not even a, this is not my, this is not my strength. He has very little ability to tell a narrative story. He tells a lot about this. He goes into this subject. All of a sudden we're in Czechoslovakia. Then we're in the United States. And so also having seen almost all Holocaust footage there is available, it's hard to get me not excited, but right. to get me interested in what he's talking about. So I thought, but I, you know, he's got people working with him who are good on this thing. And how, yeah. how are you separating what their workload is? And <laughs> you seem to really. Oh, like I know. Yeah. Look, these people are come from the, uh, from the intelligentsia or something. <laughs> I still don't really get, after all these years, I understand why the Bolsheviks were, did they come from a family called Bolsheviks? Is that how they got their start? Uh huh. The Bolsheviks? Uh huh. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Funny stuff. I, no, uh, no, no. I actually think, I mean, at least as a whole, I actually thought I, I thought it was a uh, pretty well told narrative. Um, oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, because the, because the thesis is how all this relates to the United States role. Oh, they did a great this. job with that. They did, and, a, and a I feel like uh, if you watch the whole thing, there is a uh, you get a lot. You you have a lot more sense, and and I don't know if this is necessarily a great thing, but you have a much better sense of how how and when the killing took place with the Jews, you know, mm, and, right. and the, and the, the, Oh, you're uh, talking about the second and the third one. Yeah. Yeah. The first one I've watched, so I have to watch the second and third. Okay. So I'm, you know, please, and, please, and I, I thought they did a good job in, in, in terms of really telling the story of the Holocaust as opposed to the gory details of the Holocaust, you know? Yeah. It wasn't so much, you know, the real horror of the whole thing is that, Nobody wants the fucking Jews. <laughs> that, was, right. I mean, oh, that, well, that is really, that's the horror you come away with is just the world fucking hates Jews. Well, that's what I learned that I didn't know uh, when I was a kid was that nobody wanted, was, not only was nobody going to take the Jews, nobody did take the Jews. I think that. And it France fueled the Nazis. Back. And it fueled the Nazis going, see, no one wants the Jews. <laughs> well, not only that, uh, Hitler was very influenced by all of uh, Segregate, the Jim way Crow, that. Yeah. Yeah, Jim Crow. So, I mean, he was, uh, you know, it's like, it's just a ridiculous thing. Like, I, uh, I, I know, I know this, this stuff because I'm immersed in it, like, you know, repeatedly. So, I think it was more like, um, I will watch the other two parts because I, well, I can't stand, you know what? I have, here's the truth. I haven't watched a lot of his, Documentaries like I like jazz, but I don't like his take on yeah. jazz. I mean, I thought that, like, I thought that this was better paced than most of his stuff. Ultimately, I think that's the other people with him. It may well be. Yeah, it yeah. may well be. So you, anyway, you have to watch it because it's really amazing, and I didn't mean to soft sell it. No, I think uh, I think I mean I think it's I think it's you know for those for people who really who for whom the Holocaust is sort of an abstract concept, this will make it concrete in a way that's not unbearable you know in terms of yeah you know just the horror but well the parallels are so amazing and the people specifically speak about the parallels which i think is important you know what i mean they're not, not making it go this could happen again yeah they're basically saying this is happening right now well and just the fact that there's still people alive telling the story tells you we aren't that far from it you know that's true because there are people who like whether they ninety or the, whatever. Yeah. There are still clear. There's still a lot of witnesses, not just from the Shoah film, right? But from still right now today. Yeah. So I thought I thought it, it, you know for for something that has been in fact covered and covered and covered and covered and covered by documentary filmmakers, uh, there was a story here yet to tell. I thought, and also I think I am. Uh, prejudicing the fact that I've seen some of this footage or seen these topics dealt with. For the most part, they have not been dealt with. No, but people have not seen what you're talking about. This could go here, this could go here, and maybe a week from Tuesday, this could, the exact same thing could happen because the parallels are so strong. Yeah, but I don't feel like it's too heavy handed in terms of preaching. No. You know? It's not preaching at all. It's not preaching at all. I, no, uh, and the thing is, I also I found even... uh, a, a revelatory that. Uh, I, I, you know, I've known full well that that uh, Charles Lindbergh was a white supremacist for, you know. Is that in the second one? Uh, yeah, he's all. Yeah, uh, I want to watch that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what's funny is is just that he plays like a Nazi Les Nessman. 
when he's speaking. He just <laughs> he has this high voice that you know, and the white See, the white European races. Also, when his kid was kidnapped, um, he really kind of went. He did everything he could to not get not. To not get his kid, he wanted to get his kid back, but he took charge of everything, yeah, and would, would allow no actual police. He would hire his own people and all this kind. Of, it's a pretty interesting case. I mean, the fact that he was a he, American hero who could so easily have brought people together. I mean, the whole country was. He did bring people fighting. together, just not the good ones. <laughs> well, when his baby got, well, he brought people together because he was actually uh, the stuff he was doing in the sky was was not Nazi like fascist. He wasn't a uh, fascist like with all of his uh, exploits. Uh, well, I know I, I mean, said that wrong. But yeah, the point I, mean, was, I don't know. I don't know how you fascistly fly a plane. <laughs> well, you do. He had one that he didn't use. He had one with the Heil Hitler on the side. Like that one. <laughs> the spirit of Himmler. <laughs> and then he goes, ask me about my fascism. It was it on the other mm-hmm. side of no, They wouldn't have said fascism. It was too close. You didn't hear people call. No, it was fascism. fascism. Fascism was 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 what it was. Right, but I'm talking about what's his name. People didn't call it. Did they call it fascism as soon as Mussolini came out? Yeah, I mean, mas- yes. <laughs> it must be based on a word that it that, just, just uh, didn't have the negative spin it now has. <laughs> when you watch Mussolini, he is the greatest in terms of being the worst human being in the world, and just he has all those Trump things where he. He looks like uh, it, it's so Trump like, but it's not Trump like because Trump is copying him because Trump wouldn't know how to copy. Somebody. No, but Trump is copying him and just and he's copying Hitler. And, you know, it's it's, you know, yes, but he's they not, were right, both he they were both archetypes of the, you know, that the he, car, the cartoon won't fucking kill you. That is the, the that is the most incredibly prescient and disturbing things about it was. Hitler, although he was smarter than Trump, he was not, you know, he was, he was many things that Trump wasn't in terms of that he knew something about the world, you know, yeah. uh, coming in. Yes. But, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. This has been happening all week. So just the cartoon uh, dictator. Oh, 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 they weren't afraid of him. And they also thought they could control him. So the people who were in Germany who were the, uh, whatever the wine, what were they called? Not the Weinrich. The Weimar Republic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They thought that he was a horrible guy. Not some of them did, and there were a lot of anti-Semitism to begin with. But they thought that they could control him. Well, they thought he would burn himself out in short order. Right, and how similar to it is it? Uh, like, like, like. I think it's almost dangerous to think that the guy who's going to be the most evil guy is going to do it in some kind of uh, with skill. Right. You know what I mean? Because yes. <laughs> even Hitler. He was a terror. You know, I'm not saying that you can be evil and not be an amazing general, but he was not when he took over as a general. Yeah, which I, he named himself. That it wasn't a good idea for him. Yeah, Trump was not a Trojan horse. <laughs> I think that's a good way of saying it. Hey, maybe can I send you most of the topics and then you can uh, <laughs> me, summon them up? Let me put them into three words for you. That's my new consultant service. I have to say, though, the last couple of days I've been more, uh, in, not incoherent, but more uh, whatever that thing is called where you <laughs> say something and you forget it, right? Yeah, sorry, it was funny. But, it was funny. It was just happened to be a funny way. Th- incoherent and then go incoherent was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not. Look, I bite all kinds of. No, 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 I'm serious, folks. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, now, I saw a movie that I liked. Susan and I both saw it called Nico 1988. Yeah. Uh, have you saw that one too? No, I was saying yeah. You saw that? Uh, uh, do you know what it's about? No, I don't. Uh, it's about Nico, uh-huh. uh, the singer Nico, uh, as in the Velvet uh, Underground and Nico. Exactly. But now she's in Germany. It's all true. Uh, but the, of course, not, not Nico playing Nico. But the person who's playing Nico in 1988 is amazing. When you read about the background on the film and how uh, how much they really uh, like, she had a, a whole other career. In uh, Germany, I think, and people all tried to mock it, you know, like people, you know, the same people. Would Hi, mock. Nico. Hey. Oh, nice going, Nico. And the music's amazing that she did. And the person singing it is a singer and obviously not Nico, but it was just the way they captured it. I just thought it was a really great, really great movie. I don't know who made it exactly, which is a really beginning to maybe it was Magnolia. Who's Magnolia Pictures? Uh, 
I don't know specifically. I don't know. It's not. It's not. It's is. not the guy, the basketball guy, right? No. To, to Gubin, Gubin. Huh? That's twenty nine pictures or something like that. Wow! Just stop talking. So. so <laughs> okay, now you can talk again. Should I breathe more? <sighs> Bye. <laughs> I wanted to exhale high. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously, seriously. No, seriously, it's not funny. So, you know, Hitler killed six million people. Folks, no, it's not a joke. I'm not kidding here. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'm sorry about that. All right, I'm back now. My father, my dad used to say, Joey, don't joke about genocide. The dad thing is when your dad would have been 195 years old, you have to back off dad stuff. I think he did. You know, my dad, it's not like saying, oh, one more thing from my dad that I, you, I probably didn't tell you before. Right. No, it's not like that. Yeah, I'm, worried. It's I'm, like, I'm worried he'll run out in a second term. Oh, shit, his dad said. <laughs> it's like, Joey, get up. Get back up. You know what my father was that saying? That was his folks? mom. His mom said, always said, get oh, up. I get up. You know, folks, I came down here when I was first running for office. A similar way. How many people have been on the Amtrak 693? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just joking, Joe. Look, I'm not going to make fun of him that much more because I don't care about that he has these weaknesses. Uh, all I care about is, is reelecting him. And I, I just found out that you cannot reelect him this year. Nobody told me this. Huh? He's you not on the ballot. Try anyway, I say. You think so? Yes. Pat Paulson would have run. Vote, vote with your legs. Do you think that I think Pat Paulson was the best of the presidential uh, imitators? I mean, of, of like what it would be like fake campaigns, for, the a fake, fake campaign, campaign. Because, and it wasn't controversial what he was even talking about. Right. He wasn't dealing with the issues at all. Pat Paulson. He's just really doing a good job of saying nothing. Mostly. Very yeah. effective. Yes. But, but, you know, back in those but days, sometimes was, by saying nothing, he was saying something, something real. You, my know, friend. you know, Josh, you bring a very good point of 65 degrees. Well, you're watching the, the Mets against the Marlins all this weekend, 65. And we're giving away, and now coming up in the second inning, it's, it's a two for top of the second inning, two for Tuesday. And release. All right. Do you think that my theory that they, that all announcers sound like DJs or all DJs sound like announcers is a misunderstanding of what voices sound like amplified? Uh, they're not to. really saying. They're not really saying. Well, it's a wonderful day here in Baltimore. They're not really saying that. That's just how I'm hearing it. I think so. I think you you uh, you apply your impression of DJs to every DJ and then bring it back as if it's universal uh, to the announcers. And they're not yeah. doing it. As in other words, Susan there are, I mean, there are definitely baseball guys. I would say baseball guys are the are the most guilty of old timey uh, right. vocal hyperbole. Because I listen to the ones who aren't as funny as the ones I love. Of course, I love my own guys, but Keith Hernandez, Ron Darling, and Gary Cohen, they're, they're very, very funny. Yeah. And then when you go to these other ones, they're, they're, there's, there's the same sound, but no humor. Like, and don't forget the January, July 8th is bobblehead night. I think, uh, I think baseball announcers are the most likely to actually say, folks. <laughs> That's why you appreciate a Ben Scully. You know, and a lot of people, a lot of these announcers, they thought they were going to come by, and they thought that they were just going to stick out and be a lot better. Well, I didn't set it up right. Apparently, up. they thought they'd be a civic institution. Anything but. You know, I always mix up anything but with apparently not. Yeah. <laughs> anything but. Anything but is so good because as you get farther away from the event... That's all you. That's all you remember from it. Exactly. <laughs> Anything but. but. That's why it stuck with me. Because he's already a, a very pleasant uncle. You're one of your uncles or whatever. He's a very yes. pleasant man. Yes, a so when he's, he's, is what we call that. What's that? A vuncular. A vuncular. Thank you. So when he's tra when he is like gonna when you get him steamed, I'm not talking about the later racism towards the basketball players. <laughs> He was a very nice guy. But when you got him... Shut up wanted... and dribble. <laughs> I just think of all the Laura Ingram classics said as, uh, 
as of Vin Scully. Black people are... <laughs> Let me tell you something. No, how about, how about him as Biden? No, 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 I'm serious. All right, stop it, Andy. Who am I? Who's that guy who does uh, Madden? As then- my dad used to say to me, Vinny, get up. Vinny, just get up. And then he'd say, honey, I love you. <laughs> Apparently, these Vietnam protesters thought that they would get attention by running out naked on the map. I don't know if they would. <laughs> and throughout history, that, is that how he dealt with everything? Yes. <laughs> Apparently, want- Hitler thought he could make it all the way to the Volga River. Anything but. Apparently. Apparently, they... I was going to say something about Jackie Robinson coming up into the pros somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I was supposed to. Uh, Jackie Robinson coming into the majors was supposed to solve the uh, the race problem. Anything but. Yeah, that that lost a little bit of its bite along the way. <laughs> I think it was the pause. It, like might three, it, it seemed like a four hour pause to yeah. me. Yeah. You know, they're not all gems from where where I sit. <laughs> okay, when I, when I when I die of lung cancer, let it be in your fucking head. Apparently, Andy thought he could smoke pot all day, every day, without repercussions. Anything but. Yeah, I like I like the way I read it on these things. Like, can pot give you cancer? You know, I re, I just go straight over the parts. You go, you know, of course you could irritate your airwaves like any smoke could. Right. You know, go right over that. Okay, don't give me the. Uh, What's the bottom line? Am I going to live to a hundred as a miserable cur? <laughs> Am I a cur? No, no. What is a cur? Do- a, a rabid dog? Something like that. I every I've been reveling in all of your story. Here's the thing, Susan and I. Yeah. We want to get a little doggy, but we're not going to get one yet. You're not going to get one ever. So many problems. You're never getting one. But I walk by a. Uh, 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 a vet, a vet place. Yeah. Every day on the, on my walks. Yeah. There's one in, uh, and they say, we are good people over here. We're not like those, uh, <laughs> there's some sign on the outside. We believe in your, it's something like, we believe in your animal. Uh, we will do everything we can and we will charge you accordingly is the last line on the box. No, the point is I saw all these people with their doggies. Yeah. And what is going to happen to your doggie that you're not going to pay for? Once you fall in love with your doggy, it's over, Josh. It's over. It's another money pit. It's a total money pit. I mean, I know people who wouldn't have gone to the lengths like we went to with Clyde. There's no choice. Monetarily. <laughs> There's no choice. <laughs> Unless the doctor said, this thing I want to do is going to make probably be worse for him. No, it's just that you're in love. Yes. No, I mean, you know, I'm, everybody has a different. I think Take. set of values when it comes to pets, but for me, it's like once you're in the family, you got you get family member rights. I was just thinking about what if you were in a family where that wasn't the rule, where it was like, look, I like pet pets, but I see one little cough or I see one little there's you know well, ghost. I mean, I mean stop I mean, on your own. I mean, if you know, if people didn't have different. Versions of this, there wouldn't be animal shelters, you know. That's right. That's you know, right. There's yeah. Plenty, there's plenty of people who have a very low threshold for <laughs> fuck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the, I'm not going to get into this kind of terror, but honey, the dog was just taking a nap. It's four years old. Slept too long for my. Well, first of all, the other thing is horrible. Is that when you look at all the true crime that I listen to? Yeah. Almost all the true crime is, if you've had a serial killer, he has tortured animals. As yes, a, as a that's kid. almost always a first step. Yeah, and um, I was trying to think, like, because I always think, which oh, is you know, I, which in a way is reassuring because it means they're at least not dilettantes about it. And that means that they they're dedicated. If yeah, they're not a yeah, dilettante, they put in the time. Yeah, a dilettante is that like from the old Southern thing? Like uh, a, it's a woman. It's French. No. It's a French thing. Oh, très bien. Not a, no, not sp- a debutante. No. no. I speak French very well. I don't know if you knew that. I don't know what it means, and uh, but my, someone said my accent was good. Yeah. What do you think of that? I think it's bullshit. You got to- <laughs> <laughs> it's bull- Mierda. You think there's a lot of mierda? 
based that, in it. Is that how you're pronouncing it with your good French? M E R D. Mierda. Yeah. Well, first of all, <laughs> can you do any of the? Ch- I would like the choking. Croc, my... Choking, huh? you mean? No, croc. 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 Why am I doing it with a Russian? Croc voice? monsieur. Yeah, or croc madame. We. Oui. God, you are. You are. Or pathetic. croc de merde. How would you have gotten by? What is it when you were in World War Two? You had to say who's Babe Ruth, and if you didn't know who he was, they kill you. I think mm. you know. I think the smarter guys went with more obscure names than Babe Ruth. <laughs> It's been 20 years, and the bay's been retired, right? Something like that. <clears throat> I'm having to clear my throat. You can't tell what I'm doing now, right? Uh, I hope you're going to Pickle's first question. Ow. It's time for questions. What do you want to know? We love your questions so much. It's half our show. Half our show. Pickle says, uh, when did Do It Again become Run It Back? <laughs> Sorry about the Edwin Newman, babe. Edwin Newman died again? Yes. Over and over in my heart. Sorry about, is Pickles talking, doing another bit towards somebody at the end there? Sorry about the Edwin Newman, babe. I'm not sure. Maybe uh, Edwin Newman was in was a, a nitpicky language guy in that. I know. I'm the one who brought Edwin Newman up into the our, into the podcast. You didn't do uh, it. Okay. That's fantastic, Andy. Congratulations. Thanks for that. No, 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 no. This is important. <laughs> right, the next thing. <laughs> Jason Parton 2, The Revenge, says, I'm sending this in early so I don't forget. Yeah, that would have been a tragedy. Clearly... <laughs> That's not nice. Um, yeah, Jason, no. I, I'm all for you, whatever right. he said. Clearly, in the 45 RPM album of your life, this show is the A side. What's on your B side? Mm. Juggling. Like, you mean like- Juggling is my B side. <laughs> oh, yes. I think I've, uh, I've got confused by the... Um... The album, but uh, by the conceit that this show is the A side, is hard to even swallow, really. But well, but, you know, here's the thing: the reason why it's hard to swallow is because A side, B side. You're already saying it's good enough to be an album, which I don't think I would say. Well, first of all, an A side, B side is not of a 45 is not an album; it's a single. Well, you know what I mean, a record. Yeah. How how was I wrong? You're not. Jason Pardon was. Oh. Oh, B.D. West says, oh, did I have to come up with a B-side? My B-side is, uh, is, uh, not my stand-up. Because my stand-up is just insightful and brilliant. My, my ping-pong, my ability to play table tennis, which I thought was, I was the greatest table tennis player in the world. Yeah. Until, uh. He played someone. No, I was good through my, my young teens until other people had played. So other people got ping pong tables in their basement, I think, is when the, the crucial thing happened. Yeah. And then you have this guy, Joe, uh, who's the comedian who's supposed to be amazing. Uh, Jonah, Judah, Judah Friedlander, supposed to be amazing, like a world class. I can't play against the people who have a, a Western hold or something like that. Uh-huh. Have you ever played with a Western hold or, or an Eastern hold? You know what I'm talking about where you hit it? Where your, something, where have your you ever, thumb is in sort of the armpit of the. Yeah, uh, something like that. Yeah, yeah I have. I've tried them all. Here's the worst part. And of I've never pong. achieved any great uh, glory Success. with ping pong. I'm, I'm, I'm okay, but what I really like is playing against people who are, who lose their shit, and I don't care. That's my favorite. Well, That's my favorite. That doesn't happen at our age, right, does it? It does occasionally, yeah. <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah. But it was good. It was the only sport that I could beat other people my age at the time when I had the table, and they didn't. Yeah. I had a sort of, I, I had a, uh, I had a, an iron grip on the tether ball. In, oh, uh, at, I know that. At, I knew at, you were going to say that when you said that. At Cedar Manor Elementary, I had, uh, I had, uh, some dominance. Well, you were the tallest there. kid. No, I was not. But it's close. I was in the taller percentile, sure. Yeah. But it was, but you're saying it's no, not I'm saying, I'm saying it wasn't just a trick of genetics that made me. Well, that, what was it then? It was dedication and skill. You didn't cheat like me? No. 
I told you I cheated, right? Oh, yeah, you did. I grab onto the thing. Yeah. And push it. You're not supposed to do that. You can't do You're that. You're supposed to hit it with your fist or yeah. hit it with the... I had a good fist. Did you... Could you hit it with your open hand? Sure. That's when I would cheat. Throw it in there. Yeah, no, you have to hear the slap. How come nobody would stop me? Because they thought it was pathetic. Yeah. Look at a little tiny guy. Throw him a bone, they'd say. Yeah, that's what they would say. Damn it. Uh, B.D. West says, I think of you two as the Steve Martin and Martin Short of Sherman Oaks. I take that as a compliment, except is one of those two guys uh, a lot younger than the other guy? Uh, No, I don't think so. Steve Martin, I think, is older than... I believe he is, but not by Martin leaps and bounds like you are to me. Oh, God. I'm going to read this next question because I want to. Is okay. that okay with you? Sure. <clears throat> B.D. West, again, says, Ari Shafir has a fledgling podcast called Two Comics, Two Cigars. It's not two hours, but still. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that because that guy is just... I think it's since I don't ever expect to see him again. Yeah. He's just a terrible person. Yeah. A terrible human with not that. He did as a bit, Ari Shafir, the incredible racist. So he would, the whole bit was he was over the top racist. Yeah. And he would yell at Mexican people on trucks. Ari Shafir thought that was the funniest thing that he had. Now, I will say the pun is not a terrible pun. If you were going to take it and do something with it. Which one? I'm sorry. The Amazing Race. The Amazing Race. Oh, gosh, right. But if you're just going to do it to to, uh, reinforce stereotypes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I was doing. Yeah. You can pretty much sell the joke with one line and get out. Yeah. Yeah. The American. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, no, I think he's a he's a bad... I just don't like him. He's a bad guy. And he's also friends with Rogan and all these people. See, now I feel like not just that these are comics I don't like... These are people I don't want to be around on the same fundraiser with yeah. Joe Rogan. It's it's a relief. They weren't. I know you're saying they weren't asking me, but it's a, it's a relief. Okay. To be, not to go. No, you know what? Go down to the comedy store. You know there are horrible people there, misogynist dickheads. But you know you're trying to capture the old magic when Sam Kinison would throw some, you know, throw somebody out of the uh, comic house. You know the, the the good vibes at the comedy store are from the 70s. Yes. Those were the good vibes. Yeah. They were over by the end of the strike. Pretty Even much. though you could see good people there. Yes. Like Pryor. Yeah. And all those people. Yes. By 70, by the time I came out here in 80, you know, by the time I started comedy in 84, is over. Yeah. Forget it. There was the improv. That was the center of the, <laughs> was like a renaissance. You couldn't tell whether you were in Paris at the improv <laughs> or America. Did I, did I deal with all that well? I think uh, I did. That's I, like, I, I, I like no the show. Idea. It was really good, right? Sure. Dan Marsh okay, yeah, says, says uh, yeah. hey, guys, even though he's very shy about it, longtime thoughts by our listeners may recall Andy mentioning once or twice that he goes to therapy. But what about you, Josh? Do you go? Have you ever? Or is therapy too much like a pep talk for you? I'm sorry. I didn't read that. That would have been more you know, appropriate. I'm reading it to you. But you read it to yourself. That's and okay. you know more, you hear better than I, than I do. So what do you think? I, uh, I do not go to therapy. Uh, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't gone to therapy since my teen years, and even that was very brief encounters. Um, I think there's an element of that, uh, it's too much like a pep talk for me, but there's also, I also, I, I don't know. I, uh, I'm pretty therapist-like to myself in my head. Right. I, I do I do question why I'm feeling certain ways at certain times and and break it down and yeah. usually usually can find a suitable explanation for it but right. uh mostly it's just I don't know I don't uh I don't easily uh talk about myself uh like that I think so, a lot of people feel the same way you feel yeah I mean I certainly have no I, I I, I, I would not hesitate if I ever felt like it would be useful for me to do yes. it. I don't have resistance in that way. Right. But I don't have... You just a, don't feel I don't, Yeah, I don't have a lot of unanswered questions as to why I'm feeling certain ways. 
Well, here's the thing about uh, how therapists can help, but that doesn't mean you have to go to them. Therapists can help in the sense that you may think, I'm not saying this, I'm going to say this right away. There may be things about yourself that you don't quite realize. Oh, no, and, and I readily admit I might be telling myself a bunch of lies. No, right. yeah, I know what you're saying. You. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, but but I find like, them like, satisfactory lies to get me through the day. Well, you're very well adjusted. You, know, you seem to be, you seem to be, not in the serious amount, and a lot, and also you never had something that was so bad like OCD that the only way to go probably would have been therapy or something like that. Yeah, no, I haven't. I, you know, I, I, I've I've had bouts of depression as is probably my biggest. Uh, debilitating thing, and even right. and even those aren't especially debilitating for me. They aren't deep down, right. you know. They aren't face down on mattress depressions. They're more uh, malaise based, I would say. Yes. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I don't lead it on uh, much like everything around me. It doesn't go unexamined. Right. <laughs> you know, you're not you know, but, walking around. But again, you're, you're, I, I absolutely could be telling myself a big pack of lies, but it gets me through the day. Yeah. Also, I think one of the problems is that there are, over the years, there's been so much bad therapy and pop culture therapy. That's what made me resistant to it was that uh, was the whole thing that my mother went all those years and my father would say, I know you've heard the story many times, your mother went to therapy for 30 years. See what did do any good? So that stopped me from going to therapy for many years. But in that case, he was actually wrong. I think my mother would may have committed suicide if she hadn't gone to therapy. Right. That's how that's how severely depressed she was. And my father wouldn't want to go. He would want to say, see what good it does you? Because he was trapped by my mother, but he wouldn't want to look why he was trapped. In other words, he wouldn't want to look at why he was so scared of my mother right. as a grown man. Sure. Or, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so, no, he didn't, he didn't want to pull at threads. And he also went to college with a B.F. Skinner was the teacher there. And I don't really know. All I know is I, I hated B.F. Skinner as a kid because he, he came up with this Skinner box. But now I don't really, I realize I really don't know much about Skinner. Maybe yeah. the Skinner box wasn't good, but he was the foremost psychologist at one particular point. So I don't know if everything that he said has been rejected. But that was my point of view coming in was like. My f- but you so just weird. adopted was, your dad's. Yeah, he had my dad's like. It's so I thought everything about my dad, but the only thing I didn't like was that there's no God. That's the only thing that I didn't yeah. like. You know. Uh luckily that's just a you know, peripheral thing. <laughs> and also just the stuff that was it was hard for me that I look back on and it's like that my parents were of course progressive. I'm saying of course. They're progressive. They wrote never didn't vote for uh, uh the Democratic candidate, but they hate but he my father hated the candidate. Yeah. He thought he was a liar. Yeah. He sh- thought he shouldn't have hired his brother. He thought he was corrupt. All things that may have been, you know, true historically. But the idea of being able to say, wow, this guy could be inspiring, that wasn't my father. Right. He was more uh, cynical. Cynical. Yeah. You know, but again, there were things not to like about the Kennedys. But it was weird that I was a kid. It was weird when I was a kid because I felt like there were things that I adopted as we w- we got in an argument once in my twenties because uh, it's a whole long story because my brother and I used to argue unreasonably about politics, but we all got into this family. No, not not my twenties. Towards the end of my dad's life, where uh, uh, where the whole family was together, and uh, I had said that made the point that I felt that JFK, if it hadn't <clears throat> hadn't been JFK in office, there's a good chance we may have been dead at this point because jfk during the bay of pigs he ignored the one cable from khrushchev i thought he did amazing that was the cuban missile crisis all right the cuban missile crisis. he ignored the one thing from khrushchev and he you know he was unbelievably navigated what was an unbelievably doomsday scenario of the russians having missiles 90 miles off the coast right and i thought and if he, you'd like to know I, the story, watch the movie 13 Days and just try to ignore Kevin Costner's Boston accent. And so I said all the things that were in that movie, I'm sure. He ignored the he ignored the advice of his crazy generals. All right. So some people want to have a nuclear attack. And then my brother and my father 
they just were, they would never give it up. They were like, oh no, anybody would. I can't argue with you. I can't even explain it to you. It's like, they would not acknowledge, yes, he did an excellent job on that day, even though you don't like him because he slept with Marilyn. Whatever the thing was, right. where he hired his brother. This was the thing in my household that was very limiting, was the black and white thing. Yes. You can't say there was anything good about the Kennedys. Right. Whereas I would go, Reagan's the devil, Dad. And my father would go, don't. Don't vilify people you disagree with, son. It's no, he funny. wouldn't. He do literally that. would. He yes. did. <laughs> yes. That's pretty. Except that he was the devil, Reagan. But that was pretty good. But he hated Reagan, though, in a way, right? Or he just didn't get. I think my father way. voted for Reagan. I, I, I can't. I can't vouch for that. At least the first time. My father. Wow. Was a, my father was a Republican. He, you know, he would never have. Uh, like I know he liked. I know he liked Bush Senior. Wow. I always assumed your father was a uh... I, I have no I have no idea other than how he voted for president, at least. Right. I really honestly have no idea how he how his republicanism manifested itself. That's interesting. He because he was incredibly for... liberal in every possible way I could perceive. Right. But I really think there was I think what I really think is that he had a deep sense of personal responsibility. Yeah. And I think, you know, you know, he was an Eisenhower Republican. You know, he was, you know, he was head of the young Republicans in 1959 in his high school. You know, he went, now Dylan wasn't involved. Like in he the didn't vote for Kennedy either. My dad. Oh, <laughs> but Dylan wasn't involved with the Republicans. Right. This was no. something that Dylan. No. Well, Dylan didn't go to high school with my dad. He went to college. So. Right. Right. <laughs> and just for the year. But yeah, no, like I said, I don't have, aside from just the party in which he was registered, I don't have any sense of how he was, or how, how his Republicanism manifested itself. Right. But you in know, this he was a, case, you know, he was a school board member and chairman and all his things were about, you know, right. Deep enrichment. And, you know, but did he think that, did he make fun of Reagan? Because Reagan was funny, uh, kind of like uh, I, I don't. I, I, he didn't. Do you know, I he never came he up. My, he was not strident about anything. My dad, right? In, in well, that sounds of, actually. I mean, he was like, strident about things that were truly important, but right. he, he wasn't someone. You know, he would be more likely to rail at a newscaster's bad use of English than he would at the content. It's so funny because you think of like, you know what someone is like, but I really don't know what your father was like. Which is kind of like amazing about life that we have so many similarities, but that your father, you know, I may assume, oh, he's like Josh, one generation older. My, da my dad's humor. demeanor was very Obama-like. Yeah, that's good. Oh, I would, what I would have done to have an Obama in my house instead of my mother. Oh, Michelle Obama. I could have had the greatest upbringing. The, uh, the, the sort of quest for civility is very much in, in common with what Obama and my dad. There, and there's a yeah. lot, even in their speech patterns, there's a lot of similarity. Uh, okay, well, I can't see voting. I mean, was Nixon not as big a buffoon in, in 1960? Like, he wasn't as mean a guy? He, he wasn't he as big a, a cartoon, certainly, in 1960. Right. I mean, he was just vice president, you know? And It's just such a weird world, because there's no way in the world that you could have predicted... Uh, well, that guy Johnson, he's going to be spearheading all of civil rights. Mm -hmm. Let me let you know that. Uh, oh, great, great. No, 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 no. That's not all. He will also cause all the current Dem Democrats to become racist Republicans. Oh, I don't like that part. I liked it when we had the big, the big uh, majorities in both houses of racists. Who? <laughs> what? What joined together white people? They could be pro labor. But they all hated, the, I don't know. I, I ran out of, of meat. Anyway, you go back to a question because otherwise it'll just be me going, I'm in a home in a human. Okay, QMOC says most people think that as you age, you become more right wing. Speaking of, <laughs> apropos of what we were talking about, you two seem to have resisted that. But do you consider yourselves more right wing in any views? I don't use the word right wing as a positive thing. I think I always use it, reserve it. For right wing is like all the asshole Republicans. Yeah. Uh, so so the, substitute the, 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 conservative. Right. Yeah. So that's substitute the word conservative. 
but that doesn't you can't even have a conversation like that because if I showed you a northern liberal like Mayor Lindsay, there would be no reason why he wouldn't be. He could have been a Republican then. Right, you know but, I mean? right. But the that's not the question. The question is: Is there anything? Well, don't yell at me. Is there anything that you've become more conservative about as you've aged? Okay, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, I was going to stick with the that it's not right wing, but you're saying just forget about that yes, part of it. Yes. Just assume it's conservative is yes. the word. Oh, I mean, I think you'd, I'm generally more like don't take chances or do stupid things in my twenties. Right. But I don't think I don't, do not think that my political views have been moderated or, you know, like in the classic sense of, oh, I used to think this. I want everything to be legal. You know, I'm, I'm legalize all drugs, you know, all these. And, and then you go, well, well you, you want to just give out heroin at the thing? Well, not necessarily just like that, but you can come up with a system. I might be conservative within my liberal views sometimes, but mostly I can't. I've gotten more liberal as I've gotten older. All right. Yeah, I can't think of, there's certainly nothing social that I've become more conservative about, I don't think. Uh, you know, I might have, uh, I might have a little more concerned about like capital gains taxes now or something, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but I don't, uh, you know, I don't feel like, you know, like welfare is for freeloaders or anything like that as right, I age, right, you know. Right. <laughs> I just came up with an exact example of me with this question would apply yeah. is to when I got angry at that singer who broke her guitar on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yes, that That's was, an example. That was get out of my yardish. Yes. There's no way around it. <laughs> Cause you, and luckily, you know, like three minutes into an uh, argument that you look like an idiot, but it, it's like, whatever I thought was, yes, it's nice to keep the guitars, but then the whole thing of, it was, it was, what is that noise and what are they doing and why are they dressed like that? Right. <laughs> I don't understand a word they're saying. Uh, a serious man says, gentlemen, I have a theory about the story that Andy brought up last week about a plan to dig a well at his temple. Could the controversy have been over digging a private well that was to be used to bypass restrictions on lawn watering put in place during a drought? Yes, I think it has. I think it was like that. I think it was like, oh, that was my mother's suspicion. Yeah. Let me just say, phew, mystery solved. <laughs> also, I would like to say a serious man. I like that is is uh, spelled with two ends. So. It's, it's a period serious man, as if it's a, a period serious man. So uh, think about that. Tweet, 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 but I get, I get, tweet, tweet, tweet. Ooh, ooh, ah. Tweet Bahara says, hey, Andy Martin. Oh, I love this. And hey, Andy Martin Scorsese is only five feet, four inches. Who's the good fella now? Tell Marty to go. Get his fucking. Why am I not going to tell Marty to get his fucking shine box? He did not do what the guy in Goodfellas did. What am I going to. Did Marty kill cinema? No, he helped. <laughs> right? He just want to go eat a bowl of soup off his head. Yeah. But I do think. I do look forward to the day that I meet him. And I'm towering over that little guy. Hey, little fella. Hey, Marty. I love your movies, you little guy. Would you like me to help you up so you can get dessert? <laughs> you know. I think I was funny with Scorsese, but I don't think he's going to use me for anything. Wheel of Randy. Oh. Wheel of Randy says, uh, hey, guys, Suzanne is what the kids call a deep cut. It's on 12 songs. Two minutes of Randy mumbling about stalking some poor girl while Ry Cooter does his thing in the background. I, uh, did, uh, I, I, did, I did actually go look after the last week's uh, show to, to uh, figure out where I was, and I... Uh, the only, I, I have both Randy Newman, the eponymous Randy Newman album, and 12 songs, and I, and I always mix them up and never listen to either of them. So the only thing off 12 songs that sticks in my head is uh, Mama Told Me Not To Come. Uh, yeah. How about milk truck calls the sun up, paper hits the door, subway shakes my floor, and I think about you. It's so hard living without you. Yeah. And that's the from the album that, what is his name, the Beach Boys? Van Dyke Parks. Yeah. Which one is that? I don't know. I'm not, could be I'm 12 not songs. That, I'm not deeply steeped in uh, Randy Newman lore as much as I am. Just I like several of his albums a lot. 
What is Suzanne? I don't remember Suzanne. Suzanne is on 12 songs. As, okay. as, I know, but how come I can't remember it? And how come I'm not one-upping you? That's what gets me. I don't know. The one I remember from Randy Newman, uh, Epitomous, is, I like your mother. I like, I like your, your brother. brother. I like, I like you. you. And, and you, you like, like me, me too. too. You and me, you and me. Sing it for me. One little no, thing I can't because you keep singing with me and I hate it. You know, here's the thing. Wait. Now, Josh, I <laughs> I understand that the one up, my general one upmanship is annoying. But I thought in that one case that you might think, oh, it's nice that he remembers the song. But you're right. It was me taking your sunshine. I cannot seem to get over this. And I hope I do in my later years. Yes, I know that album just as well as you. Who the fuck cares, Josh, that I have heard the album? You're saying you heard the album. And I have to go, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me do uh, You and Me, Baby. Full yeah, orchestra. I think, I think you're getting the, land, the landscape. That's That's absolutely good. right. Yeah. Tweet, 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 tweet. Oh, the horror, 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 horror. Oh, the horror, horror. Ooh, oh, the horror. You know what I'm doing there? Yeah. It's uh, not Elvis Costello, Marlon Brando, right? Tweet Pahari says, okay, here's my confession, and Oh, my God, this is very strange. Tweet Pahari says, okay, Andy. Okay, here's my confession. Andy, I've never smoked pot or taken a drink or any drugs. I think less of him now, in a way. Yeah, keep going. I can take or, le- I can take or leave Bob Dylan and the Beatles. I know nothing about sports, but I'm a big Andy Andy fan. Can we still be friends? Of course. Who fucking cares about who else you don't love? You like me. That's the main thing. And in fact, if you, the more you tell me that you like me, I might go, you know what? I almost agree with you about Bob Dylan. As right. long as you keep the positive. Even if he went, I don't like me. Jews except you. That's a good point. It <laughs> still would keep him in the running. I can deal with a little anti-Semitism if at the end of the day the guy's going, but I'm one of the good ones. Right, exactly. I'm a funny one. <laughs> Xavier Krugerand says, hi, guys. Sorry for referencing old shows, but I got to give props to Andy for coming up with the movie title Dracula 3, again with the Dracula. (laughs) And then to Josh for describing himself as a Jehovah's hostile witness. (laughs) TS215 laughed up a lung. Oh, my God. I'm going to like that. We have a good show. A year ago, we were on fire. Dracula 3. More with the Dracula. Alucard. More with the naming of the of the uh, scary people backwards. Is that the only example of it? Uh, hey, Andy. The Lily called, said, please stop gilding me. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that as guilt. Redacted says, Redacted says, it's 1983. Andy gets dragged to the coconut teaser. <laughs> <laughs> coconut teaser is funny in and of itself. Good job. <laughs> Andy gets dragged to the coconut teaser on Sunset to see G.G. Allen and the Scum Fucks. That's not really their name, is it? It might be. Before the set even begins, Andy's denim, <laughs> denim shirt draws the ire of the bald front man. And as the feces flies overhead, he realizes, I gotta get the hell out of here. That's punk. This is actually a completely true depiction of a my great, a great, inner mind a great during word, the, a, a fine word picture yes but even if it wasn't that, i moved out here in 78 how am i going to be the ramones all of a sudden well, i know they weren't in they were in new york i think how we am heard I your song at- last week you didn't want to be the ramones you wanted to be steely dan in the worst way <laughs> that is true. well don't say the worst way at the end of it. Uh, that no, that's just, part of the name you, of the band you went too <laughs> that's far the there. name of your cover band no, no, don't say in the worst the way. Just don't Steely say in the Dan worst, the worst way. way, ladies and gentlemen. He wanted to be Steely Dan in a way that would make nobody want to listen to music anymore. <laughs> I named my band Transfusion, saying that we went beyond fusion. It will make me laugh to the day I die that I clearly knew we couldn't play fusion when we came up with the name. Yes. We appreciate some of those Larry something Carlton, music. Larry Carlton. Yes. Yeah. What idiots were we? We were young. You were young. Do you think these are when you were a kid, you go, I may be the stupidest kid in the wor- world. I may be doing the stupidest thing ever, but this is going to be anecdote worthy 
when I'm old. No, you don't think that. No, way. I don't think so. <laughs> Redact is back. back. Hey, we uh, we jinxed each other. <laughs> Hi, Hi. Uh, don't forget, Aaron Rodgers didn't just ask Joe Rogan about the vaccine. No, he consulted his close personal friend Joe Rogan. Big difference. Oh, that's it. That is absolutely. I hope that people watch this. He was bragging. It's he is a professional football player, one of the most famous professional football players. He thinks that's nothing. He I happens to be personal friends with Joe Rogan. Right. What you might as well say, I'm it's, a fucking it's the idiot. Good dipshitting seal of approval. Oh, God. Let's keep I begin moving. to think maybe. Let's, let's keep moving. Okay. Seriously. Okay, let's go. Seriously. Come on. Johnny. Johnny Whoops. No, will you last stop <laughs> rushing me? Johnny Whoops says, Andy, I'm listening to you on the Greg Fitz Gibbons podcast, and you're downright articulate on it. Best behavior or what? No, no, no. It's not a thing of best behavior. He's basically allowing me, he's allowing me to do whatever I want, which can work once a year. Right? On a show. Yeah. He, what he's saying is, uh, I'm on my best behavior. Is that why I'm doing articulate there? Right. I, I don't think there's ever a way to re- figure out when I'm articulate. I think that comes and goes. Uh, yeah, it's a good day, bad day thing, in my yeah. experience. Stephen Elton Yates says, uh, gents, in addition to the George Plimpton specials, I enjoyed the Jacques Cousteau specials narrated by Rod Serling when I was a boy. Any favorite special TV moments from your childhoods? Uh, I loved it when that that uh, spinning that spinning CBS special uh, CBS gay? special presentation with the bongo music. I'm old enough to remember that I liked when the peacocks wings. I loved out. I loved the Charlie Browns when they came on. I did, despite yeah. the del- oh yeah the deluge of Dolly Madison commercials. I loved the Charlie Brown specials. I think the Charlie Brown special and that goes to me too. Was, I must have been when I was a kid came out the first time, right? That's back when they weren't abusing the word special. Right. And they weren't abusing commercials as much. Well I guess they were. They were. Tom Tom here, I'm gonna do it the way you would do it. Tom Tom the Tom Tom says, Was the song you played the break by Steely Andy, like Steely Dan named after a dildo, but shorter and doesn't work as well? I'm not gonna read what what do what, what, what I so I have a what do I want? A battering ram over here? It was me, though. You were born with a grudge to bear. You carry it everywhere. Oh, my God. It almost was like for a second I was thought like my stuff was on the radio. So good. Thank you for that. When we do the live version. Never. Suvid says, thing? I'm watching this show with the daughter from Schitt's Creek doing a Worcester accent, and it is really distractingly bad. The show is interesting that it, that it switches format from gritty thriller to sitcom when the dumb husband is around. So, any questions or comments? I can't figure out which one it is. Can you? Uh, isn't it like uh, Steve should go fuck himself or something like that? It's like <laughs> something like that. Bandicoot B says the Queen has both been given credit for overseeing a lot of the dismantling of the British colonial empire and been roasted for being a clear symbol of that same empire. Where do you guys fall? As a British person, what is James Mason's thoughts on the Queen's passing? Well, I thought she was a, a stalwart symbol for our nation, but uh, time for the old lady to go, right? W- Wookie Talkie says, how many rodeos have you been to? Is there a correct number? And can there ever be too many rodeos? Good. Interesting question. Inter- I said it was an interesting question, Josh. Take it away. And there's a picture of uh, Faye Dunaway as Joan Crawford uh, about to dress down the Pepsi board in Mommy <laughs> Hey, you remember the scene? Don't fuck with me, fellas. Was that movie like a uh, maybe exaggerated? It was a little bit. It was a little bit over the top. Uh, Esai76 says, don't you hate it? Don't you hate when a song gets stuck in your head? It's very annoying. But whatever you do, don't put the blame on you. He's saying we should blame it on the rain. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want me to. I could be like you. And blame it on the rain. Were you the actual voice of Millie Vanilli? It's uncanny. It happens to be. Yes. Let me say it here. 
Let's keep or, moving. Christopher uh, Citro says, uh, sitting on Masquamicut. That's not you from continuing on a healthy clip. Misquamicut Beach. Yeah. Last, does that sound familiar at all? It sounds like the best way that I would have gone with all it. All right. Sitting on Miss Quamacut Beach last uh, Saturday night, a group of profoundly drunk people on a motel balcony were whooping it up. One yells, Horshack! And the rest start loudly doing his hand raising. Ooh, 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 ooh! What happened the last time you guys went to the beach? Well, not that exactly, but... I had a lovely uh, meal at a steakhouse. Well, if I do go to the beach under these circumstances, I will be mis- I used to be I would be mistaken for Horshack often. Yes, at the beach so in particular, great. right? Bella B says, "How many sugar bowls? Super bowls? That can't be what he's doing." <laughs> Bella B says, "How many Super Bowls has Andy been to?" Uh, I want to say, I wasn't at the Super Bowl for the Jets. I was in the 2000 Super Bowl where the Rams beat the Titans, and I probably did. Four or five Letterman wins. Any hello? Any feelings about Super the scene at a Super Bowl? Well, it's hard when you go there. When you're working, uh, it's it's a harder. It's not it's not much. And the, all the ones I went as an adult where I was working. Yeah, I mean, if you call what I do working. Did you go to one as a kid? No, but I was at the championship game when the Jets beat the Oakland Raiders en route to the January 1969 Super Bowl. That's the closest I've ever come to a championship. Gotcha. Well, it was a championship. God, well, I've never been to a Super Bowl. I've been, to, I've been to a couple of World Series, but never a Super Bowl. Have you ever been to a football game? Yes. Several. Chris, Chris Weddle says, how do you guys come up with so <laughs> much to talk about? This sounds fantastic to me. Uh how do you guys, but I don't think it is. How do you guys come up with so much to talk about? Does any preparation take place? It's obviously funnier to claim it doesn't, but I have to wonder. Love the podcast. I have always argued or tried to make lists or tried to make departments. Yeah. And I never succeed, have succeeded with any preparation. I skills. will assure you that there is no preparation. Uh, I think the whole thing hinges on Andy's fear of silence. I think that's exactly right. That is exactly right. Greg Kelly says the Mets are playing in Minneapolis next September. Inaugural T. What do you mean next September? Next September. Who look is looking at next year's thing? Minneapolis next September. Inaugural T. S. Con, or we would need an inside joke name. So maybe Droopy Con. I would be in in the front row for a panel James Mason appears on. No, I don't think this is going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Not only you're saying there's a world where we where we go on the road, but we also go on the road to do live uh, versions of our show. I don't see that happening. No, I don't either. I don't think that's what he meant. I think he meant a con, a, a convention. Oh, but that yeah. Well, that has to be here then. If All right, have but a con, we'll, we'll miss the Twins Mets game. Is what he's saying. <laughs> Chaotic neutral, oh, I see. Chaotic well, neutral says, hey, guys, just wanted you to know that because it's played so often during the breaks, the grudge song by Droopy Dan is now stuck in my head. As the kids used to say three years ago, it slaps. Yeah, I would say describing me as Droopy Dan totally took me out of what I was enjoying. I was really liking that one by Chaotic Neutral. You were born with a drug repair. You carry it everywhere. You don't pay the poo-poo. So I do the dig-a-dig-a, dig-a-dig-a, poo-poo. You put the poo-poo, 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 poo-poo. You do the poo-poo, grudge, 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 grudge. You were born with a grudge to who? Hadiba, haba, hadiba, do that, do that, do that, do that, do that, do that, do Ooh, you're mad. Yeah, you were born. Yeah. That was so good. Uh, 11 year old court jester says regarding the pre emergent herbicide corn gluten, can this be used to make a new kind of cornbread? Or is this really just a reference to any seed protein more soluble? In alcohol than water. Just kidding. Fake question. I love this question. I really it's do. I, it's not a question. It's not a question. I, I learned something about uh, bread. Mm. Something about being heavier than alcohol. All right. Steve Wright says, uh, Jeopardy style question. 
In what year and on what podcast did Andy describe Droopy as hugely large yet soft and gushy? Or gushy, I think probably is what you said. Not gushy, that's grosser. Uh, P.S. I watched my birthday Kindler cameo. You were as funny as you were high. It was perfect. <laughs> my dogs did adorable head, head tilts when you said their names. Aw, it was very By nice. the way, that's not a Jeopardy style question at the top, but that, we'll, we'll let it slide. I would never be able to guess when I said that droopy line, yeah. even if I tried. Okay, test show 197. No? False. It's not? Okay. Did you ever realize that Test Show and Thought Spiral have the same letters? I do. Yeah, I have noticed that. Seth Dick the Third says, been listening to a lot of old Casey Kasem, American Top 40. You know how he signed off? Keep your feet on the ground, but keep reaching for the stars. Keep you know, your I did not... feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. You're fucking around. Fuck you. Fuck you. Block mute. Block mute. Unblock mute. Mute. Block mute. Mute. <laughs>